Kindergarten Video On Demand. This video is an overview of Unit 6, Using Numbers Within 20. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the standards, intended pacing, and sample instructional strategies for Unit 6. Chapter 1, AKS and IOAs. In this portion of the video, we will review the AKS and the Indicators of Achievement, or IOAs, for Unit 6. The AKS is the overarching knowledge and skills that students are expected to master. The IOAs are the learning objectives that will allow the students to demonstrate mastery of the AKS. The AKS and IOAs may not be taught in their entirety the first time they appear on the instructional calendar. Some AKS and IOAs will appear multiple times throughout the year. In Chapter 2 of the video, we will look to see how the AKS and IOAs in this unit are paced in detail. Let's go ahead and take a look at our AKS and IOAs for Unit 6. Unit 6 has three AKS. AKS 3 is our primary AKS for this unit while AKS 2 and 6 have been ongoing throughout the entire year. Under the AKS, you will find the Indicators of Achievement, or IOAs. You will also see that we have provided you with a state coding at the end of each AKS and IOA in parentheses. If you are looking up resources on the Georgia DOE website, you will use the state coding found at the end of each of our AKS and IOAs. The focus of Unit 6 is work with AKS 3, specifically IOA 3A. AKS 3 sets the stage for building a deep understanding of the base 10 number system by composing and decomposing the numbers 11 through 19. Students develop an understanding of teen numbers as a group of 10 ones and some more ones. This foundational understanding will be extended in first grade when students are formally introduced to place value and unitize the 10 ones as a single 10. Since kindergarten students do not unitize the 10, base 10 blocks are not used in kindergarten. Instead, we will use groupable materials so that the students can see that as a group of 10 singles or a group of 10 ones. While working with AKS 3 and IOA 3A, students will use specific sentence stems to represent teen numbers. When composing, students will use the stem, 10 ones and blank more ones is the same as blank. When decomposing teen numbers, students will use the sentence stem, blank is the same as 10 ones and blank more ones. While mastery of addition equations to represent teen numbers is not expected in kindergarten, students will be exposed to the equations. Unit 6 includes AKS 6, which is one of our ongoing AKS. AKS 6 states explain, extend, and create repeating patterns with a repetition not exceeding 4 as well as describing patterns involving the passage of time. The study of patterns provides opportunities for students to make connections. These connections help to build a foundational understanding of algebra as it relates to addition and subtraction strategies, the count sequence, and geometric understandings. IOA 6A states students will describe a repeating pattern with no more than four repetitions or iterations of that core, which is made of shapes or numbers. This can also be extended to a repeating pattern of objects. Once students have identified the repeating pattern, they extend the pattern. Students also create patterns of their own. It is important to know when showing students a pattern to describe and or extend, the entire course should be created in the repetition. For example, if the pattern has a core of triangle square square, that entire core must be shown at least twice. In Unit 6, students will continue their work with describing and extending repeating patterns. This is the first unit students will be introduced to creating repeating patterns. Students will first create repeating patterns at the concrete level and then move to the representational level. 
With IOA 6B, students should be able to describe patterns involving the passage of time using words and phrases related to actual events. This IOA should not be taught in isolation, but should be incorporated into everyday discussions in the classroom. The final AKS in Unit 6 is AKS 2, which is also an ongoing AKS we have been working on all year. AKS 2 consists of students rope counting forward to 100 by ones. Starting at 10, students rope count forward by tens to 100. And this standard also requires students to rope count backwards from 20. Students will also count forward within 20 and Excuse me, they will also count forward within 100 and backwards within 20 from any given number. At this point in the year, all parts of this AKS have been introduced. So in Unit 6, students will continue to work towards mastery of this AKS. Chapter 2, Unit Pacing. The pacing guide is an example intended to model how instruction of the AKS and IOAs in each unit may be facilitated, but teachers should design pacing to be responsive to the learning needs of their students. Let's take a look at our pacing guide for Unit 6. In the box which names the unit, you will see the suggested pacing. For Unit 6, using numbers within 20, we suggest about four weeks. The big idea, numerical reasoning, as well as any links we feel would be beneficial for the entire unit are also located in this box. Directly below this box, you will see a list of the AKS and IOAs which have been strategically clustered together. This is followed by our suggested pacing. So let's scroll on down and take a look. Specifically in the left column, this is where you will pro um, we provide you with the learning progression for the AKS and IOAs. This includes the concrete representational abstract progression, as well as a progression of specific learning targets within the IOAs. Suggested manipulatives are also included in this column. The right column provides the suggested resources to guide you with instruction. We begin Unit 6 with our work on IOA 6A. We've been working on this IOA all year, but now we're getting to the point where we are going to do the um, part of the IOA which says to create repeating patterns. We will work with creating re um, repeating patterns first at the concrete level. So concrete, create a repeating pattern, and a big portion of being able to create patterns is for students to be able to explain the rationale for the pattern. So why is this a repeating pattern? As you can see, our first few days of this will be spent at the concrete level, and then we will transition to students representationally creating um, repeating patterns. We'll do this for just a couple of days. Then our work with this IOA, as well as IOA 6B, Passage of Time, is going to move into our activating strategies. The rest of our unit, our time in our lessons, will be spent on IOA 3A, which is composing and decomposing of teen numbers into 10 ones and some more ones. IOA 3A, that's our focus. So we're going to be spending a little over three weeks in this unit. We're going to begin our work with teen numbers by decomposing teen numbers into two parts, a part with 10 ones and a part with some more ones. To support our students' understanding of teen numbers, we're going to spend quite a bit of time at the concrete level before we move to the representational level. So we can kind of look at how far, how long, excuse me, we're spending on decomposing at the concrete level before we move them to the representational level. Once students have an understanding of what it means to decompose teen numbers into parts, we're going to then move into composing 10 ones and some poor, more ones to create that whole, to create that teen number. We will start back at the concrete level. We want our ample time at the concrete level so our students can really build a, a conceptual understanding of what it means to compose. And then we'll move on into that representational level. 
We'll have a few days at the representational level where we are focusing specifically on composing. And then the last few days of our unit are going to be at that representational and abstract level. And it's going to be a mix of composing and decomposing numbers based off of the context. So you're going to see our target here has changed. Instead of it saying specifically compose or decompose, we're now going to be describing by composing and decomposing. So our lessons um, and our activities will have a mix. Some will be composing, some will be decomposing. This progression is intentional as it helps students to build conceptual understanding of what it means to be a whole and parts and sets the stage for building a deep understanding of, of our base 10 number system. In unit six, we do also have AKS2, our rote counting AKS. This AKS occurs during the activating strategy. Remember, we've already introduced all parts of AKS2 in our prior units. So our work with AKS2 during activating strategies will support students as they work towards mastery of this AKS. Chapter three, instructional strategies. This portion of the video will highlight specific instructional strategies that will be utilized in this unit. Please refer to the Analyzing the Standards or ATS for guidance on additional instructional strategies for each IOA. Now let's take a look at possible instructional strategies in action. We're gonna look at AKS 6, IOA 6A, create, extend, and describe repeating patterns with numbers and shapes and explain the rationale for the pattern. So what could this look like at the concrete level? Well, this unit, we're going to be focusing in on the create part. We've already been extending and describing patterns. We've done that earlier in the year, concretely um, moved into representational. And so now we're at that create stage. So here's an example of a problem we could use for creating patterns. Jared wants to make a repeating pattern with pattern blocks. What is an example of a repeating pattern that Jared can make? Well, if I was going to do this problem with my kiddos, I would want to kind of model some thinking that I would want them to do. So I might start off with this. So I want to create a pattern for Jared. It's got to be a repeating pattern and it's going to use pattern blocks. But before I can create the pattern, I need to think about what I know about patterns. I know they have a core. The core must repeat. They can be made from shapes, colors, numbers, letters, actions. But this problem says Jared is supposed to use pattern blocks. So to create an example of a pattern for Jared, I want to start off by thinking about what is my core. If I can create my core, then I can just repeat it, and then I'm going to have a repeating pattern. So maybe Jared could use a square a triangle, and a triangle. And if this is his core, and I'm gonna circle it so that I remember that that is my core, then all I need to do is repeat that core at least one more time, and I'm gonna have a repeating pattern. That's a square, triangle, triangle. So it's repeated once, I now technically have a pattern. If Jared wanted to, he could repeat that core again, so he would need another square, a triangle, and a triangle. So let's get it on the screen for you guys. So this is an example of a repeating pattern that Jared could use pattern blocks and make. So I've got my core, square, triangle, triangle, that core repeats, and I even repeated that core one more time. So this is an example of creating patterns at the concrete level. And I could also solve this exact same problem at the representational level. I would still want my students to do that type of thinking, even though they're going to draw it out. Maybe they're just going to use whatever shapes they want to use. But if I'm going to do this at the representational level, I'm going to start off with the same thing. What do I want my core to be? Maybe what I want my core to be is a square a circle and a circle. I'm going to put two circles on top of each other. So if this is the core, this is the part that has to repeat. So I'm just going to draw it again. 
Square, circle, circle. I could repeat it again. Square, circle, circle. I could even repeat it another time. Square, circle, circle. So I can see that my core has repeated three different times. So this is an example of a repeating pattern students could create at the representational level. KS6 IOA 6A is our repeating patterns IOA. It specifically says students create, extend, and describe repeating patterns with numbers and shapes, and then they explain the rationale for the pattern. So here's another example of what could be done at the representational level. You could have students, um, this is a task students could work on with a partner. They could each draw an example of a pattern and then explain their pattern to their partner. So if they're going to be drawing a pattern, we want that same type of thinking. What do we know about patterns? We know they have a core and the core needs to repeat. So this is a little bit more open-ended than the last one because in the last problem, we said that they needed to use pattern blocks. Here, the child could use anything that they want to do as long as they're able to create that repeating pattern and then also describe it to their partner. So an example might be, let's say I'm gonna use numbers for this one. So I'm gonna draw an example of a repeating pattern and I'm gonna start by thinking about my core. What do I want my core to be? I'm gonna have my core be three, four, seven. And that's the core. I'm gonna identify it as my core by circling it. And in order for this to be a repeating pattern, this entire core must repeat at least once. So three, four, seven. A student may stop there or they could repeat it again and so on. So here's an example of a repeating pattern. I know it's a repeating pattern because I have this core, three, four, seven, and that three, four, seven repeats, which is what makes it a repeating pattern. To deepen students' understanding of patterns, we can also have them draw non-examples of patterns and then explain why it's not a pattern to their partner. So again, they're having to think through, what do they know about patterns? Patterns have a core, and that core is what repeats, and that's why it becomes a pattern. So if I want an example of something that's not a pattern, maybe I'm going to have something that never repeats. So for example, I might do one, four, three, six, two, five, eight. So I'm just creating a string of numbers and there's nothing in that pattern that's repeating. So that's the type of thinking that um, I would want my students to be able to tell each other. Nothing in here repeats, it doesn't have a core, so therefore it's not an example of a repeating pattern. They could do the same thing with their, um, with a shape example, triangle, circle, triangle, square, square, circle, heart. Nothing is in here is repeating. I started with a triangle and a circle, and then I drew another triangle. So this possibly could have been a core, but that core does not repeat. I don't continue with triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle. So again, having them just to give examples of patterns, identifying the core for one another and explaining that that's why they have that repeating pattern, that core repeats, and then also extending their thinking to think about what are those non-examples of patterns and why isn't that an example of a pattern? We're gonna look at instructional strategies for AKS3, IOA 3A. Describe numbers from 11 to 19 by composing or putting together and decomposing, breaking apart those numbers into 10 ones and some more ones. I wanna go ahead and apologize because I know the writing on your screen is blurry. 
And I am sorry for that, but my ladybug is refusing to focus any better than what it's showing you right now. Um, however, the instructional strategies, the writing I do, and the, the models seem to be okay. So again, I apologize. But we're going to start off by looking at this IOA through the decomposing lens. So we're going to know our whole, and we're going to be decomposing it into the two parts, a part of 10 ones, and then determining how many more ones there will be in that team number. So here's a problem. And this problem, we'll look at it concretely, representationally, and abstractly. So Zane has 16 worms for his fishing trip. Does he have enough worms to make a group of 10 ones? And will there be extra ones? And then we also have our stem that we're going to be using for decomposing. Blank is the same as 10 ones and blank more ones. So to do this at the concrete level, we're going to want to first start off by counting out 16 manipulatives to represent those 16 worms. And then we're going to see, can we make a group of 10 ones? And after we have that 10 ones, how many ones are left over? An organizational tool for this IOA that you may find very helpful is a 10 frame because it helps us visually see that group of 10 ones. You can use just one 10 frame and have the 10 ones in it and the extra ones outside, or you can use a double 10 frame, one for the 10 ones and then the other for the extra ones. Um, that is completely up to you and it can definitely be done both ways. So I have my 16 worms right here and I want to see, can I make a group of 10 ones? And if I can, how many more ones will there be? Well, I know in a 10 frame, there are 10 spots. So if I have enough worms to put one in each spot of the 10 frame, I know I have 10 ones. So let's see. There's a worm. And I had 16 worms. Oops, there we go. Ooh, I've made a group of 10 ones. So the number 16 has 10 ones. And then there are some ones left over. Let me see how many ones are left over. I put them in here and then I can count them. So if I have 16 worms, I can make a group of 10 worms and I'm going to have some worms left over. How many worms am I going to have left over? Well, I'm going to have left over one, two, three, four, five, six. So 16 worms is the same as 10 worms and six more worms, or I can think about it just as the number. The number 16 is the same as 10 ones and six more ones. So we would fill that out to represent 16. So 16 is the same as 10 ones and six more ones. And I can see that in my model. Here's my 10 ones and my six more ones. We can also have students do this at the representational level. Same thing, but instead of using those concrete manipulatives, they're then going to draw it out. Students may need that 10 frame in order to help them with organization. So I'm just going to go ahead and see, well, the number was 16, so I'm going to put 16 dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And the question asked, is the number 16, can I make a group of 10 ones? Well, yes, right here's my group of 10. I know that because this 10 frame is full. And then I have six ones left over. So 16 is the same as 10 ones and six ones. If Zane has 16 worms. He can make a group of 10 worms and he'll have six worms left over. Now, students can also draw this out um, without using the 10 frame. So we know we're starting with 16 because we are decomposing. So they may start off by drawing 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then can I make a group of 10 ones? Well, let's see. Can I put a circle around 10 ones? One, if I start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I want to go all the way to here. So this is a group of 10 ones. And then I can see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ones left over. 
Having kids draw it out completely like this can be difficult for some students organizationally. So that's why that 10 frame might be a good tool to help you um, help those students specifically just stay organized or teaching them a structure for how do we draw 10. Maybe it is that we always draw it like a 10 frame. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Do I have a group of 10 ones? This is much easier for them to circle. And then I can see that I have six ones left over. So 16 is the same as 16 ones. Excuse me, 16 is the same as 10 ones and six more ones. Now, at the abstract level, our students, the more exposure they have with decomposing T numbers at the concrete level and at the representational level, they're going to start to see that pattern and they may make it to that abstract level. And a student might be able to say, oh yeah, Zane's going to have a group of 10 ones and six more ones because I know 16 is the same as 10 ones and six more ones. And they may just be able to fill out that sentence stem and or they may even be able to show it to you as that equation. 16 is the same as 10 ones and six more ones. So that's that thinking that a student may be able to do at that abstract level. So AKS3, IOA 3A, describing teen numbers and the strategies that we just looked at were specifically for decomposing or breaking apart. AKS3, IOA 3A, describing um, teen numbers by composing and decomposing into 10 ones and some more ones. Here's another example of what decomposing at that representational level may look like. So sometimes our students are going to need to draw out that hole for themselves, like we did with Zane and his worms. I drew out all 16 worms, but other times they may be given a representation that already shows that hole. And and then they're just going to need to decompose it into the part of 10 ones and then the part of some more ones. So here's an example of what that might look like. Poppy sorted the coins in her piggy bank. She counted 15 dimes. So I know my whole. Decompose the number 15 into 10 ones and some more ones. So really for this, all our students are going to need to do is out of this 15, where can you find that group of 10 ones? And then how many more ones are there? And then complete that sentence stem and or equation. So um, a student may say, well, you know, they may want to count to see that there's all 15, but then they can go ahead. If I start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this is my group of 10 dimes. And then how many more dimes are there? One, two, three, four, five. And they might even label it, there's my 10 and here's my five. So what do I know about the number 15? 15 is the same as 10 ones and five more ones. So this is another example of that representational level decomposing teen numbers into 10 ones and some more ones. Let's take a look at AKS3, IOA 3A, which is describe numbers from 11 to 19 by composing and decomposing the numbers into 10 ones and some more ones. So we're going to look specifically at the composing portion of this IOA. And so we're going to use this problem and we will um, compose it concretely, representationally, as well as move into that abstract thinking. So again, I apologize that the problem is blurry, but I'll read it to you. LaTanya went shopping and bought 10 cookies. Then LaTanya bought seven more cookies. How many cookies did LaTanya buy? So in this instance, I know the two parts. We have the 10 cookies and the seven cookies. And then what we're wanting to do is put them together to see what teen number it creates. So a couple different ways that we could do it at the concrete level. We could definitely use our 10 frames and we could make um, our group of 10 on one 10 frame. And we can make our group of seven on the other 10 frame. So I'm just going to use snap cubes. You can use all sorts of manipulatives for this. The 10 frame, the double 10 frame, really helps me to see the two different parts. So this 10 frame has one of my part. There's the 10 cookies. 
Sorry, guys, I know it's a little difficult for you to see all 10. And then I can use um, another color even to visually see that other part, as well as put it on that second 10 frame. And so how many is this? Well, some students are going to need to count them all. But ideally, what we're going to want is to be able at this point in the year to count on. So I have a group of 10. This one is full. So I know it's 10. Now let me count on 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So LaTanya has 17 cookies. And I can go back to that sentence stem. And let's think about what we had. We had 10 ones and seven more ones. And when we put that together, we find out that 10 ones and seven ones makes the number 17. So LaTanya bought 17 cookies. 10 frames are an excellent um, organizer for us at the concrete level. We can also use the part whole organizer. And this can be done at the, um, at the when we're composing as well as when we're decomposing, it can be done at the concrete level as well as at the representational level. And this isn't a strategy, it's just an organizer. Just like the 10 frame is an organizer, it helps us organize our thinking and see our different parts. So if we go back to our problem, we had a part of 10 cookies. I'm just gonna label it. And then we had a part of seven cookies. And we want to know what do those parts make when we put them all together. So students could use the manipulatives and they're going to place that part of 10 over here because that's that one part. And here's the other part, which is seven. And when I put those two parts together, it's going to give me the whole. And I'm going to see what number I can make. And so then they're going to use their counting strategies, um, whether that is counting them all by touching and counting or moving and counting them into a, a more organized line. Or we know some of our students are going to be able to count on. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So that is showing me 10 ones and seven more ones or 10 cookies and seven cookies is the same as 17 cookies. And we can go back to that stem. 10 ones and seven more ones is the same as 17. Now, our students may also do this at the representational level. Again, they may use these organizational tools to help them organize their thinking. So I can go ahead. I know one of my parts. So, so one set of cookies that she bought was 10. So let me show those 10 cookies. I know another, um, then she bought seven cookies. So there's another part of the cookies that she bought. And then how many does this make together? We have 17 cookies. So 10 ones and seven more ones is the same as the number 17. They can do this same thinking on their part whole, I mean, on their part whole organizer. Again, I'm drawing a picture. That's my strategy, but the part whole organizer is just a way for me to organize that thinking. So here's one part. And then one more part. There's my 10 cookies for the first part, my seven cookies for the second part. And now I want to put all of that together. So I'm going to draw these up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to take this part and I'm going to draw it up here. And so, how many is that in all? Well, I'm going to count on 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 10 cookies and seven cookies is the same thing as 17 cookies because 10 ones and seven more ones is the same as the number 17. Students might use this part whole organizer. It can kind of get a little tricky um, when you have 10 here, seven here, and then 17 more up here. Technically, if you were to count everything, it's 34, which is why I kind of drew my arrows to show what I'm doing, thinking about what I would have done concretely is I would have taken those parts and moved them to the whole. So since this is a representation, I'm now going to move it up to my whole to see what those two parts are together. 
Students may also draw this representationally by drawing their first part. Here's the 10. Okay, and then I know another part is seven. I like to organize into um, groups of five so I can make that 10 frame easily. And then, so how many cookies did LaTanya buy? 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. She bought 17 cookies because 10 ones and seven more ones is the same as 17. And then, of course, you're going to have your students that with plenty of opportunities to compose at the concrete level as well as the representational level are then going to be able to do it abstractly. And our students will know, well, if I have 10 and I have seven more, they're going to know 10 ones and seven more ones is the same as 17. And they may also be able to represent it with that equation. 10 plus 7 is the same as 17. So this is what the composing for 3A could look like at the concrete, representational, and abstract level. In mathematics, the emphasis is on the reasoning and thinking about the quantities within mathematical contexts. Specific mathematics strategies for teaching and learning are not mandated by the Georgia Department of Education or assessed on state or federally mandated tests. Students may solve problems in different ways and have the flexibility to choose a mathematical strategy that allows them to make sense of and strategically solve problems using efficient methods that are most comfortable for and make sense to them. It is critical that teachers and parents remain partners to help each child grow to become a mathematically literate citizen. These standards preserve and affirm local control and flexibility. From the Georgia DOE's Comprehensive Grade Level Overview.